Lastly, was there anyone from your past, a mentor or someone that you admired, you'd watch from afar maybe, that you just really liked how they handled situations or you liked how they did things or their mindset? And what was that that kind of always stuck with you even if you didn't really consciously realize it? Um, well, I would say I had a personal mentor. Uh, Jerry Cass was a, a playwright um, from New York. He was a professor that uh, Alex and I had at Columbia who was a, a near and dear friend who unfortunately passed away um, some time ago. But, um, but he was sort of a, a huge influence because when I got to film school, he was one of the first, uh, you know, uh, older seasoned writers to come to you and say, I, you know, I think that you know what you're doing is 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 really great work, and um, he was incredibly cur encouraging. And he, I, we sort of became family. He then, um, you know, uh, introduced us to his wife, who's Delia Efron, who's one of the Efron sisters, and she's amazing. Um, uh, Jerry was uh, my son's godfather, and Delia is my. Uh, my son's godmother, and so I'm still very close with Delia, but uh, and she's she's definitely filled uh, uh, some of that um, you know uh, space of, of Jerry's that that uh, he used to occupy. But they they've both been great to us um, over the years. Um, so yes, yeah, so we had a, a personal mentor, and uh, in terms of 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 mentors from afar. Um, you know, there's probably a whole bunch. Um, I don't know, maybe, do you have, do you have any? <laughs> I mean, I can say for this project, I would say that there was a, uh, and we've talked about this before, um, uh, the way that Stanley Kubrick, uh, uh, you know, he's, he started out thinking he was going to adapt Red Alert, um, a sort of a serious uh, thriller look at, at nuclear war, and then the more he looked at it, the more absurd it was to him, and that ultimately became Dr. Strangelove. Uh, and I think that, you know, sometimes looking at, in this case, at propaganda, at, at entertainment as propaganda, it's sort of the more we look, the more kind of absurd it became to us. So I think that that, at least for this particular project, was probably a bit of uh, an inspiration from afar. Um, in terms of sort of, yeah, uh, direct mentors, I mean, I, I mentioned Jim Signorelli, who was the director that sort of, uh, you know, kind of brought me to SNL. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really, he'd been around for a long time. He'd been the director there since 1975. Um, and so, was just this fascinating guy that, that knew everybody's job on set. Like, he could always answer, if a crew member came to him and said, we can't do this, he always had an answer for it. Like, is he he'd basically been in that situation before and kind of had a trick or whatever. So I definitely learned a lot from him. But then I was also lucky that um, I, I kind of grew up with the crew that I eventually worked with um, because I started as a PA at, at the film unit and then, you know, and then was the light, you know, became a producer. Um, all the individuals that would eventually sort of start, you know, basically supporting me once I started directing were all people that, you know, when I was, you know, young and silly and didn't understand what was going on were, were there you know sort of teaching me and showing me what was going on so you know I think them and seeing their interactions not only with you know with me obviously but with other directors I got to do that too you know like the, I, I would sort of I'd be the one that come out and we'd, we'd you know we worked I remember we had Jason Reitman come in and Noah Bombach and then and obviously Jim and different people and getting to see that the, who they responded to and the aspects of you know what they felt like worked with each person and all that kind of, you know, those dynamics. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know, that was a really valuable thing to have that relationship with those people and sort of see what they valued um, in the people that were sort of, you know, uh, in charge or, or, you know, they were sort of leaping into battle with. And, um, and so I always, you know, kind of tried to take sort of lessons learned from that. And, uh, and then, you know, from afar, I think obviously there are, there are influences and, and people that I love. Um, you know, again, we talked on this show, you know, Brian De Palma and Roman Polanski, you know, so were, for me at least, you know, pretty important. And uh, Jonathan Demme and, I mean, Paul Thomas Anderson was kind of, that, that he, I remember he was a sort of, watching Boogie Nights was the first mm. time I feel like my brain kind of clicked to like uh, that seeing yeah. a director's hand actually at work uh, you know I, I'd always loved film and I'd lo I grew up you know with Spielberg and 
love those universes, but then there was something in Boogie Nights, I just remember, I think maybe I was just at the right age and, and sort of open to it, that I suddenly was like, no, noticed that the filmmaking just became really apparent to me and what was happening. And um, so yeah, there's, a, you know, there's all moments like that, I think, and you know, that's what I love about what doing, being able to do this, is that it's a completely fluid industry and that you, you know, you never know everything. You, you know, you continually get to learn new tricks from people and learn, you know, and see new things and, um, and also, you know, there's constantly new content coming out that is surprising you or, and teaching you and showing you different ways of seeing things. And, and yeah, so it's, it's, you know, you get the opportunity, the fact that you can keep adapting with it, that there's not, there's no rule book that says, well, this is how you do it. Uh, it's, that, that's, you know, that's not there. It's tough at the beginning when you start, the fact that there is no rule book <laughs> is the most infuriating thing. You're like, well, what am I doing? But once you, you know, once you realize that really it is, it, again, it's, you get comfortable with your own sort of understanding of things uh, and, and you know, can sort of recognize that it's, it's, it's wonderful.